I am 38 years old with a master's degree. I am a high-quality single woman. I originally thought that in Hangzhou, I could find an equally high-quality bachelor. But until I turned 38 this year, I realized that those high-quality single men didn't even look at me. Over 100 million leftover women in China are now struggling to find husbands and to form families. These women were warned, don't sit around, don't wait to find a guy, find someone when you're, while you're still fit, feminine, and friendly. And now these women are entering into their 40s, single, childless, and running out of options. You're over 25, you are expired in the dating market. You are called a shenyu, leftover woman. A what? A leftover woman. After 25, you can't be picky anymore. It's like Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend. Imagine China is Leonardo DiCaprio. China is Leo. The whole China is Leo. <laughs> I dare you to say this in America. You go up to American girls and say, you're 25, it's done. You are already done for Leo. They would hate that policy. That they do. In China, they do that. How come you never say anything when they come up with the 25? Why don't you say that's how we do it in China? Exactly. I wanted to do that. Let me talk about it. I think Leo is just following Chinese culture. If a woman is over 30 years old and she is not married, she will be called Shengnu. Shengnu. Which means leftover woman. How old do you have to be then as a woman to be considered a leftover? I think around 30, like after 30 years old. But if you're after 35 years old, then just you're out of the market. You know, it's, it's more like you don't have to consider about getting married anymore. Just to maybe have a child on your own is the best way for you. Does it cost to marry a Chinese woman? In China, the bride price is money or property given to the bride's family to thank the in-laws and show the groom's determination to marry their daughter. The national average is 15,000 US dollars. I mean, guys, you can see now why so many men are walking away from relationships in Western society and Westernized societies. In China, you have women demanding up to 800,000 United States dollars for marriage. There are some women who are humble and they'll only ask for around 80,000, but the bare minimum for broke girls to being around 15,000. Again, guys, why would any man in their right mind get married, especially in a country where a high salary is roughly around 25,000 United States dollars? This means that Chinese women are all looking for the equivalent of millionaires, really, really wealthy men and really, really tall men. The average height of a man that a Chinese woman will accept is roughly 5'10". 5'10". That's very close to six feet tall. The standards of most Chinese women are as high or even higher than women in Western society. And of course, they believe that they are worth it even though they are unable to find someone who wants to be in a relationship with them. And it continues to get worse as there are a lot of women who seem to believe that they will command what they receive more than they will adapt and adjust to the expectations and the wants of men, believing that men should simply adapt to them. 30s, no kids, single. In my Chinese culture, I will be called a shengnu or leftover. But could you please explain to me why? I look better now than when I was in my 20s. My body is more toned, my skin is clearer, and my style is more refined. I have the freedom to do whatever I want to do and be whoever I want to be. The world is not my oyster. The world is my ocean. And you're telling me I'm a leftover? I'm in my main car. I mean, guys, this is the crazy reality right now where you have so many women who say this and they make these videos on social media, but then secretly they're crying at home and other women are telling on them that they're crying, that they're so lonely, they're very, they're miserable. But then when they talk to young women, they tell young women that they should do exactly what they did so they can live these wonderful extravagant lives just like them. And they're just getting started because women in Western society have boasted for decades about their masculinity about how masculine they are, how proud they are of their masculinity. They're tougher, they're stronger, they're smarter than guys, but then at the same time, they want a guy who's better than them. They want a guy who's tall, who's extremely tall, 666. He makes above six figures, so he's a millionaire. He has a six pack. He's at least six feet tall. 
I mean, think about that very, very carefully. And then they go on to list off all their attributes and all their traits and their high education. So basically, they've become the man that they've always wanted, but even they are not good enough for themselves because they still want someone who's better than them. This is the craziest of craziest realities that we are currently living in. And then you wonder why, come 2030, 44, nope, 45 percent of all women in Western society between the ages of 25 and 44 will be childless and single in the United States. How the heck is that even possible? It's possible because so many women have ex embraced masculinity, saying that they don't need anyone. And now you're going to have a large portion of Western women, women in Western society, that are going to be childless, that are going to be single, and they're going to have to figure out how to provide for themselves for the rest of their lives. This is something that has never happened before in Western society. Now, the ones chasing after me are rural bachelors. In other words, if I want to get married, I can only marry into the countryside. Oh no, it's over. I really can't get married anymore. I'm already 34 years old. What should I do? My mum is still waiting for grandchildren. Do I really have to resort to buying sperm for artificial insemination? It's so scary. I want a man. This is my undergraduate degree from Qingdao University of Science and Technology. And this is my master's degree from a private university in Seoul. You don't need to understand Korean. This is the official certification of my master's degree stamped with an official seal. If I were to falsify any documents, I'd be in prison. I graduated with my master's degree in 2015. In 2016, I obtained temporary residency in Shanghai. Here are the property deeds for my two houses. This is the purchase contract and keys for my property in Jiaxing, Shanghai. You can see my fingerprints at the bottom. Particularly, the top two provinces are Fujian at 33,000 and Zhejiang at 29,000. The cheapest provinces to get married in mainland China is Tibet and Sichuan, both at 1500 On top of the cash, most families in big cities would ask the groom to pay for a house, a car, and even some gold jewelry. It's not uncommon that the bride's family asked for too much, and the couple broke up before they have a chance to say I do. I mean, guys, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is extortion. And then on top of it, a lot of these women are now for, like in their late 30s or 40s, and they're asking for dowries. Usually, it's a dowry is paid by the woman's family to the man's family. But in China, it's now a reverse where the man and the man's family or the man's family has to pay a dowry to the woman's family, to the woman and, the, and her family. And it's not uncommon for the marriage to not even go through. So that money is gone. How in guys, how insane is this relationship? How insane is this setup? I mean, if you look at Western society right now, the average salary, the average salary in the United States is around $54,000. That's what the average person makes, okay? The average man, the average woman only makes around between thirty-four dollars and $41,000 a year. And yet, they're all expecting men that make a million dollars. And they don't care. They're like, well, I'm going to get it, and it doesn't matter. The truth is that most of these women can no longer pair bond because their expectations are so high. They're going to always compare every single guy that they go on a date with to the guy that came before them. So no man is ever going to be good enough. It's so easy for a woman to say, I've dated millionaires. You know, so many women have these stories. Oh, I dated millionaires. I dated athletes. So why didn't you marry one of them? The honest to goodness truth is that in some cases, these girls were just, you know, they're, they're telling themselves stories like, you know, we went on all of these dates. No, you met this dude at his hotel room multiple times and you call that a date. He was never serious about being in a relationship with you. Or let's say you actually did date him. The moment he did one thing that you didn't like, you moved on to the next one and you just kept going through one guy after another guy after another guy because it was just one big game for you. And now you find yourself a lot older, not in a relationship, still believing that you deserve a millionaire and lying to yourself, telling yourself that everything's going to be okay when financially you don't even know how you're going to make it to the next month. This is how a lot of women are living right now. We know this for a fact. But many of them will not admit to it openly because they just can't. They don't have they, they they don't have it inside of them to admit that they messed up, that they were wrong, that they should have prioritized, you know, 
forming a family when they were younger, like Mayumi did. You know, Mayumi started like at 22 years old, I believe. I mean, and she finished medical school at 25, I believe, when she was pregnant. Something somewhere around there. But the tip, but but American women, they prioritized, they prioritized, you know, their careers. And now they're like looking down the barrel of old age and they're like, well, you know, we will get what we want one way or another. Guys, don't forget to check out my newsletter. It's pretty awesome. You can subscribe to my newsletter for my personal thoughts and insights. It's linked in the description of the video. And also you can join the Angry Guy community over on Locals for exclusive content or just to support the channel by clicking on the link in the description of the video or going to angrygalaxy.com. I mean, guys, what do you think regarding this? This is pretty crazy. 100, over 100 million women, leftover women in China are now struggling to find men. You have women who are 38 years old, you know, with masters, opting for having to opt for rural old bachelors because that's the only thing that's available for them. What do you think regarding this and regarding this? And do you agree that it's only going to get worse as the years go by? Ten years from now, it's going to be literally a very horrible situation, especially in Western society. We're gonna have women who are a lot older, women who are now entering into their 50s and 60s with an economy where you have diminished jobs as a result of AI. A lot of women no longer having those jobs, men pulling back from society and hoarding their wealth. It's going to leave a lot of women in extraordinary destitute states, states and Western societies, society around the world, Westernized societies are going to ask, how did women end up in these severe states of destitution? You know, and of course, there will be a call like, oh, we need to help the women, we need to help them. But at the same time, how? Because the state can do whatever it wants to do. The state, the state can, the state doesn't have all of this, have enough money to, you know, provide for, 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 for all of these people. You know, the only thing they're going to give, Candace Owen said it perfectly. If they, if they start giving, if they start giving out checks, it's only going to be a couple hundred dollars. You know, this universal high income that they're talking about, it would never work. Oh, if we're going to give out $3,000 a month, it would all be spent in rent. It would all be spent in rent. You give that money to a man, he will live happily in a shoebox at the side of the road and buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin, put it in stocks, and chill. Within just a couple of years, that money will be multiplied excessively. And even then, he will just continue chilling and living his damn shoebox at the side of the road. Because men don't need much to survive. Okay? You have to remember that most men are minimalist by nature. Shout out yet again to the sleeping on the floor gang. Shout out again to the woodsmen. Then the mountain men. All right. Yeah, I know. I know. You got you got your you got your call outs. All right. Most men don't need much. Don't need much at all to be happy. It's women. Men pay 80% of all taxes. Okay, while women make 80% of all consumer purchases, let that sink in for a moment. Men are minimalist by nature. And as more men are walking away and making just enough money to survive and thrive and no more, the state can no longer subsidize the living of women in Western society. And as a result of that, that a direct result of that, you're going to see a lot of higher rates of destitution resulting in greater rates of poverty among that demographic, while more men are going to be becoming millionaires over the coming years and decade, decades. And it's going to be a, a massive shift because when a man doesn't get married, a man doesn't have children, all of a sudden, you know, his, his, his money don't jingle jiggle. His, his money doesn't jiggle jiggle. It folds. There you go. You know, and I remember there was one guy who commented and said, angry, my money doesn't fold anymore because it stacks so high. That is a reality that you just have to think about. Let me know what you guys think regarding everything we discussed here. We'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.